Hey everybody, I am here, professionally voice of YA excerpt vlog, and today I'm going to be reading from The Sweetest Thing by Christina Mendelsky. And, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just be reading from the, uh, beginning of the book, and, by the way, I really want to, like, eat this cover, because it just looks so good. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. So, I'm just going to start from the beginning. The only thing you really need to know is that the main character works in a cake shop. Chapter 1. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. I make cake. It's what I do. It's what I love. But today I'm standing over a mermaid, wondering what's wrong. She's as long as my arm, and beautiful, no doubt about that. Carved from devil's food, she's got a cute face, pouty red lips, fierce blonde hair, and her tail fin is nothing short of amazing. It should be. Last night, while most girls my age were panting over their boyfriends at the Grand Rapids Cineplex, I was sculpting fish, t fish scales out of fondant. The colors are perfect, shades of teal, indigo, and turquoise. On the board beneath her, there's an underwater garden on a cobalt-blue buttercream ocean. There are coral-colored gum paste anemones, green royal icing seaweed, graham cracker sand, and silver oysters made from modeling chocolate. And inside each oyster, a single edible pearl. But something is definitely missing, and it's making me nuts. Plots were late for church, and when Dad gets here, he's sure to be in a wonderful mood. The man's obsessed with getting his own cable cooking show, and now it looks like it might happen. You'd think it, that would make him sort of happy, but instead he's a moody ball of stress. I turn away from the cake, hit next on my iPod, and randomly land on It's the End of the World as We Know It, which seems like a bad sign. So I yank out the earbuds and wait for inspiration. In the meantime, I lean over and pipe, Happy Birthday, Tara, in fancy purple script across a delicate white chocolate banner. I carefully lift it off the waxed paper and place it in the mermaid's hands. Tara McIntyre, birthday girl, is a junior cheerleader who I don't know at all, except as an object of envy. She dated Ethan Murphy for about six weeks last year. I don't know him, either, except that he's the most perfect guy I've ever laid eyes on. I've seen him at my dad's restaurant a few times, but for the most part he sticks with the ultra-popular set and whatever lucky girl he's dating at the moment. In a nutshell, he doesn't know I exist. Slam. The back door flies open. My thoughts of Ethan fly away. Dad's here. Oh, come on, he roars. You're not done yet? We're late. I straighten up and throw him a dirty look. Good morning to you too, sunshine. He glances at his watch. Come on, Sheridan. Much later, we might as well not bother. Fine, I say, then let's not bother. Not like going to twice, going to church twice a year counts anyway. Even the great chef Donovan Wells can't argue with that. We're only going today because the bishop is in town for Palm Sunday Mass, and he's my dad's biggest fan. Dad huffs, pulls out his blackberry, and leans against the counter. We're going, so please hurry, he says, cranking out a text. I step back and survey the cake again, tapping a finger on my lower lip. He reads another message and is suddenly standing next to me. What's the problem? It's done. It's great and fantastic. Let's go. It's not done, I whisper. His phone vibrates and he walks away. What's missing? I stop and close my eyes. I hear the doorbell jingle over and over again at the front of the bakery as customers stop by for their Sunday muffins, pastries, and coffee cakes. It's a happy sound that reminds me of better days. We are so late, Dad rails in a deep vibrato, like he's going to blow. Better days. When my father's voice was not volcanic, when my mom was here for me, I picture her. Soft hair, streaks golden, long fingers with trimmed nails, painted cotton candy pink, pastry bag in hand, always smiling. It's all in the details, cupcake. That's what she'd say. And then, like magic, I know what's missing. Shimmer dust. Yes. I make a beeline for the supply shelf, grab a jar and a small paintbrush. A light touch with the fine glittering sugar on her scales and the apples of her cheeks and the mermaid comes to life under my hand. Now she's done. Thanks, Mom. I push the cake toward the corner of the stainless steel counter. It must weigh at least 50 pounds. Dad, a little help? He's sending another text. Finally, he pockets the phone and lifts an end. We move Tara's mermaid into the cooler, where she'll wait for someone to pick her up. Poor thing doesn't have a chance. She'll be ravaged by the St. Mary High varsity football team while the birthday girl and her fellow cheerleaders munch on carrot sticks and watch. Makes me sad, but it's part of the job. Cakes are made to be eaten. And I'm going to stop there. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little taste of the sweetest thing. Um, it comes out in stores May 10th um, today. So uh, go out and get a copy if you would like to.
um, <laughs> which you should. And uh, I will be having an interview with Christina later this week, as well as my review of the book. So check those out, and I will see you in this uh, in an upcoming blog, blog where I read from Moonglass by Jesse Kirby. So hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you later this week. Bye.